Hi guys, this tutorial covers the Q-Boom receiver battery installation and replacement. So we need our Q-Boom receiver, we also need our hex driver, and we'll need a battery. In this case it's the square battery 9 volts. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our screwdriver and our receiver, we'll flip it upside down, and there are four hexagon headed bolts or screws in there. Using the hex driver, we're just going to remove them. The hex driver itself is magnetic, so that helps to retain the screw. Maybe there we go. And make sure that you're doing this on a nice clean area where you're not going to lose those screws. They are actually machine screws, and they screw into um, a metal receiver on the other side, so it's not going to deteriorate over time. That's number three. We'll do number four. We're going to flip the unit over. We're going to make sure that our fingers are kept away from the blade area. We want to avoid this area. So we're just going to flip it over, make sure our fingers are well away from the blade. And what we can do is we can take the top of the unit off. The top of the unit itself um, doesn't have any of the electronics, so we can get rid of it. Um, you can see there that the servo is movable, so make sure that it's seated properly and that the wire and harness is in the right position. So we're going to take our 9 volt battery and we have the two connectors. What we need to do is put our battery on there nice and flat and then with your thumb behind, just on each side, click it in and make sure that it is seated nicely. Once we're happy that everything's seated and our wire and harness is away from the central hole, we can put the top of the unit back on and it lines up, the bar lines up against the servo arm where the blade is. And the cutouts are all in place, they can only go on one way around. So it just goes on there, make sure that it's seated and what we're doing now is we're looking inside that hole to make sure that none of the wire and harness is being caught and everything's seated nicely. Once we're happy with all of that, we're going to put in the four screws. We don't need to over tighten them, it should just be finger tight really. Just make sure that it's nice and secure. They're not normal screws, so it means that um, it's the added security of generally people won't be able to open the device without this screwdriver. We're going to have to put in some effort. And we'll add our fourth to make sure it's fully secure. And there we go, that's how to add the battery to the Cuban receiver. So in this tutorial we're going to put the battery into the transmitter or the one button remote. For this we'll need the one button remote, the hex driver and the CR2 battery. As with the receiver module, we're going to remove the machine screws. On the one button remote, there are three. So removing each one and again being careful not to lose them. Once the last screw is removed, remove the back panel We take our CR2 battery, making sure to orientate the battery in the correct direction Positive side down as indicated in the picture on the back of the battery compartment Before putting the battery into the unit, push the ribbon over and then place the battery over the ribbon. This will aid the removal of the battery. Pushing firmly down on the battery until you hear it click into position, just push the ribbon out the way before putting the rear casing back onto the unit. Thank you.
carefully replacing the three machine screws using the hex driver. So now that we have our batteries installed, we can go ahead and pair the transmitter and receiver. So we have our receiver and our transmitter are one button remote. On the side of the receiver, there are two buttons. Uh, we have the switch, the on and off. We switch it on normally, the lights will flash to show that it's on. And on the opposite side, we have a, a small red button. So what we need to do is make sure the unit is in the off position and on the opposite side we're going to press and hold the red button and at the same time we're going to slide the unit into the on position and you'll notice that all of the LEDs are on, they remain on, they don't flash and this is in program mode. So now we can lie this down, we can do this for multiple units and we can leave them for a long time and they will stay in program mode. Now we need to wake up the one button remote by pressing and holding the button until the light goes green and you notice that the lights on the receiver flash straight away. So now we can press it and it is now paired. To operate the Q-Boom, firstly we take our Q-Boom receiver unit make sure our hands are clear of the blade, turn the unit on, it will flash to show that it's now powered up, turn the unit over so the blade is not going to interfere with anything, to wake up the transmitter we're going to press and hold the main button, the unit will show green to say that it's active and the receiver will flash red to say that it's paired, we can press the button to test the receiver will flash to indicate that it's receiving the signal. To arm the device, we're going to slide over the switch. The transmitter will then go red to show that it's in armed mode. Now pressing the main button on the one button remote will activate the blade on the receiver. Just showing that again. At any point when it's in arm mode, we can slide that switch again to return it to the safe mode. It doesn't matter where the original position of the switch was, the sliding action is what changes it from safe to armed.